When you promised to drain the swamp, then play herb or tomb of Yawgmoth, now all lands are swamps in addition to their other types. Sounds about right. <laughs> How is it going, guys? I'm Cody. This is Eli, and you are watching and listening to Commander Cafe. So it's been a little while since we've come out with some videos. Um, both me and Cody have been off on adventures to various places. We actually didn't get to play a lot of Commander games against each other this summer, but we have been building decks. We have been playing Commander at various places. Uh, you were, went off to Japan and Colorado. Yeah, I was gone for most of the summer and spent a week in Japan and the rest of the summer down in Colorado. So good time there. Got a lot of Japanese cards while I was over there for good prices. And so if we have to look anything up, that's because we're looking at the cards I have in front of us, which are some of them are in Japanese, but mm -hmm. it was a good time. And I've gotten to go check out uh, California. I've been to ca Canada, um, which checked out Sentry Box, which has so many cards. Um, and then Alaska, but most of what I got there was for modern or gravity dice. So, <laughs> Okay, so um, we're going to be starting back up with our release of deck techs. Uh, and starting off, we even have something straight from Guilds of Ravnica. Um, this is Cody's Azoni deck. Right, so Azoni Thousand Eyes is a 6-drop commander, 2 black, black, green, green for 2-3, and it has the ability Undergrowth. When Azoni enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. It also has the ability of black and green, sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and draw a card. So I think when a lot of people saw this, they were kind of got scared away by the six mana ca casting costs. Um, but I built a deck in a way that it, the deck functions on its own. It's just a, you know, standard Gagari themed dredge deck, get stuff in the graveyard, get payoffs. And then I usually don't play as only until I'm going to win the game that turn. So that's kind of the build-up. I usually only have to play once, so I never have to play Commander Attacks if everything goes right. So that's kind of the idea behind this deck. It's definitely done some good work. I've uh, gotten to play against it a few times, and he has a lot of good synergies in this deck. Uh, but yeah, overall it is truly a Golgari deck in its top form because it's only, I only would see it usually once maybe twice per game but and even then it wasn't even commander tax it was you brought it back yeah it's so. usually a i'm going to play it get all the tokens and then use the tokens as a game winning payoff in some form or another so tell us about your deck uh yeah. let's start off with some card draw so card draw we want to do a lot of stuff when stuff hits the grave because we're going to be doing that a lot um one of the new cards i got in japan was greater good and I'm going to try and pull it from memory, but you sack a creature, draw cards equal to its toughness, and then discard three cards. Is that all right? uh, Equal to the power. Power, not toughness. All right. So you run draw cards equal to the power. Um, does matter on some of the cards, what, which one it chooses. There are some that is different power than toughness. Um, but this is great because it's going to draw some cards but then also fill our grave. And it's a free sack outlet, which is very important in this deck. Um, we'll get to some more free sack outlets later on. But the fact that this draws you cards while also filling the grave is exactly what you want to be doing in this deck. And then the next two kind of go together. Um, we have Fecundity and Death Reap Ritual, which is at the beginning, or Fecundity is whenever a creature is put into a graveyard from play, that creature's controller may draw a card. And then um, Death Reap Ritual, at the beginning of each end step, if a creature dies, you may draw a card. So one is symmetrical for all players. Um, you're going to be getting a lot more value out of that than most people will. And then the other one is just strictly for you. And a lot of times you can just sack a token at the end of someone's turn just to get that card draw if you need it. And yeah, those are those are both good ones. For Kunidi is really kind of a unique one in that there's not a lot of enchantments that will just give everyone kind of the same benefit. But in this one, I don't think in either of the games uh, that I've seen for Kunidi, 
not like everyone no. else didn't really benefit from it. No, it's usually you're the one benefiting it because you're going into the game with this kind of mindset in mind of I'm going to sack my creatures where most people aren't in that mindset. So you're going to get far more benefit. All right. You want to read the next one there? Uh, the next one is a new one from Gil. Under Realm Lich. So it's a creature. It's a zombie elf shaman for five mana. Um, Golgari plus three colorless. If you would draw a card, instead look at the top three cards of your library and put one into your hand and the rest into your grave. It has an additional ability of pay for life and he gains indestructible until end of turn and you have to tap it. It's a 4-3. Overall, it's basically a nice Golgari edition that's similar to a Sylvan Library, but even better because it fills your grave with whatever you want it to. Yeah, and this works in great combo with the other card draw effects we have, like Greater Good. So you'll sack a creature for, to Greater Good, you'll draw, would draw three cards, we'll say. Well, with this one, you're drawing nine and then picking the best few, and then a lot of times you'll be pitching your creatures because you want to get them back. So. Yeah, because this will replace any of your draw effects, so every time you would draw a card, you get to go through. Oh. Overall, just a really good one. And then what's your next one? That one seems extra interesting. This one was, I wasn't sure how I was going to do, um, but it's it's been an overperformer in this deck. It is. Krav the Unredeemed. Um, partner with Ragna, which we are not running, running white in this deck, so we do not have that ability. But the big benefit is you pay just one black, sack X creatures, and then target player draws X cards and gains X life, and you put X 1-1 one, one counters on Krav the Unredeemed. So, while we're not necessarily gaining anything from the 1-1 one, one counter synergies with anything in this deck, the fact that you can just play one, pay one black, sack any number of tokens. So if a board white comes out, you can just sack 10 tokens, draw 10 cards, and gain 10 life is a very strong ability for one black mana. And speaking of token generation, that is what the next section of cards is going to be. Um, next one is another overperformer. I wasn't sure how, when this card first came out, I wasn't sure how well it was going to do. Um, but it actually does a lot of work, and with it and Krav out on the field, you have a really good engine going. And that card is Tinder Shoot Dryad. Um, beginning of each upkeep, a, you, each upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one Sapperling creature, and then Sapperlings you control get plus 2, plus 2, as long as you have the city's blessing. Um, the fact that it happens each upkeep, upkeep is huge. Like, each round of the table, you're getting four Sapperlings. Um, that adds up pretty quickly. Yeah, that every time I see a Tender Shoot Dryad in your deck or any deck, at first it might seem a little weak because it's a 2-2 two -two and it's just making 1-1s, one but you quickly make it to uh, City's Blessing, they become 3-3s, three and this thing just gets out of hand really quickly, and it's, it's one of those things that it gets value really fast. Yeah. And you usually almost always have the city's blessing with this, but a lot of times you don't even care about that in this deck because you're just using them for sacrifice fodder in most cases anyway. Um, next one, we have Myko Kalith, um, Devour 2. And so it comes in with twice the number of 1-1 one -one counters for each creature you sacrifice as it comes in. And then beginning of your upkeep, put a 1-1 one -one green sapling token for each 1-1 one -one counter on it. So each round, if you sacrifice a bunch of saplings to this when it first comes in, say five saplings, he is now a 14-14, and beginning of your upkeep, you're making 10 sapling tokens. With Krav or any of the other draw effects or sack outlets on the board, you're going to just rack up the value with that. I mean, even without the extra sack outlet stuff, he becomes just a straight up beast and gives you an army every turn. Yeah, big army big advantage over everyone else just tons of value and then the last token creator i want to talk about other than of course the commander is avengers in the car almost has to be an auto including these kind of decks um don't even really care about the landfall trigger but just getting so many tokens is just just straight value in this deck all right okay so next up we have the how do you get all your mana yeah the ramp package in this deck so we have a few interesting ways. Um, if you, I, I like to build decks with using newer sets and try and use the newer cards. Um, Pit, Pitiless Plunderer is um, 
a four drop, one four. And whenever another creature you control dies, create a treasure artifact token with sack this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So the key here is it does not say whenever another non-token creature dies. A lot of these effects will say non-token, which is exactly what we want. Um, we want those tokens to have benefit in this deck and be able to, when they die, either you sacking them or dying in combat, however they die, getting mana out of that for free is just a good exchange. Have is another new one. It's from M19. Um, it's one I really didn't give much thought to until I kind of gave a closer look to it, and that's Elvis Rejuvenator. And it's a three drop. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Now, what made me re-look at this card and have to reevaluate it is the fact that you can put any land. It's not basic land. It's any land that you find in the top five just goes straight onto the field. Um, that is a very powerful effect. and I haven't gotten to play it yet, but I can't imagine missing too many times and not getting a land. Yeah, because at minimum, you get a basic. At max, you can get your Cabal or Urborg out, and yep. suddenly you just skyrocketed ahead. Yeah. Next one is one of your favorites, too, I think. I see it in a lot of your decks, so if you want to go ahead and talk about that one. Yep, it's definitely good in pretty much every black deck. Always an auto-include in Golgari. Black Market. Whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on it. And at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black mana to your mana pool for each charge counter on it. For a 5 mana investment to get that out there, it is really easy in any deck that has black to just immediately go overboard. I've gotten well over 50 mana in my Jun deck with that, and it's that can be game finishing right there, just having that much spare mana. Yeah. Yeah, it can give you a ton of mana really quickly, especially with all the creatures we have dying and coming back from the grave. So, And lastly, we have good old Sad Robot. Um, goes in uh, most commander decks and just does double duty in a deck like this. Um, coming in, sacking him, getting value, drawing the card, getting the mana. Does a lot of work in this deck. Yeah, the more the more you can recur a Solemn Simulacrum, the, the better it is. And this is just the right kind of deck to do that. I don't think it recurs it quite as good as my Amanatu deck did. Um, I was actually out ramping the ramp decks in that deck with just Solemn Simulacrum coming back in and out, but yeah. um, it still makes good use of it. Which we'll actually be doing a deck tech on your uh, Amanatu. Amanatu here in the upcoming future, so yeah. look forward to that too. And the deck that he was able to out ramp we'll be having as well, which is my <laughs> Landfall deck. So. Teasers. Two little things <laughs> coming up. Uh, keep your eye out for those. Good. Following up, we have some uh, sacrifice outlets. What do you have in here? Right. So these are our free sack outlets. Um, free sack outlets are what we want the most. We do have some, like Krob, that you have to pay some, or even a, a Zoni yourself. But the free sack outlets are really what make this deck and give you a ton of value. So we have the Seer Seer, Asnod's Altar, Altar of Dementia, and Spawning Pit. Um, Alt Ashnod's Altar gives you ramp, gives you a bit of mana. Uh, Viserys here lets you scry, put things at the bottom of your deck if you don't like them. Um, Galeria, or Altar of Dementia gives some uh, mill yep. based off their power. You Generally in this deck, you're wanting to mill yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so you're using that ability to, to help dredge yourself. Um, it's not usually a win con in this deck, though it could be depending on where you are in the game. Yeah. And then the last one is one of my favorites. I think it's very underrated. I don't see it in nearly enough decks. Uh, Spawning Pit, you sack a creature, put a charge counter on it, and then you can pay one and remove two charge counters from it to put a 2-2 spawn artifact creature token into play. Again, we're using it mostly for the free sack outlet. There's a lot of times we just want stuff to die. Um, but the fact that you can get creatures from it later on is also a good benefit to it. Yeah, it's really, I believe it's only at most a dollar or two, and that is one of my favorites just because it's, it'll give you a random spare blocker. It'll sack all your stuff in response to a board wipe. I've really had it just be a good value card in every deck I run it in. 
Yeah, I think it's very underrated. I think a lot of decks would benefit from having it out there. All right. And next week, we talked about milling yourself and putting cards into the grave. Um, next set is kind of like the dredge cards. Um, so first we have Nyx Weaver. Um, three mana for a spider. Beginning of your upkeep, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. And then you can also pay one, a black, and a green to exile it. And then return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Actually, it's just target card. Oh yeah, target card. So... I don't usually use that effect too much. It's mostly there for the self-mill, um, which you want in this deck. You want to fill your grave. Um, but I have used that ability every now and then if someone goes to board wipe or something and I have their free mana. Sure, I'll steal something back from the grave that I really need. But. After that, looks like we just have some straight-up dredge. Yeah. Uh, we do have the dredge land in the deck. I don't have that one set aside. Um, but the two creatures I have is Gagari Thug and Stinkweed Imp. Um, Gogari Thug is a 2-drop, 1-1, one, one, and when it dies, put target creature card from the grave on top of your library, which in itself helps fuel the um, mechanic of the deck itself, letting you pick exactly what you want. It's a very toolboxy deck in that sort of way. And then it has Dredge 4, so anytime you would draw a card, you can put Gogari Thug back into your hand instead and Dredge 4 instead. Um, so there is another kind of card draw replacement effect for the deck. And then we have Stinkweed Imp, 3-drop for a 1-2 flyer, and when it deals damage to a creature, destroy that creature, kind of the early death touch. And then Dredge 5, um, same thing, but this one gives you 5 instead of 4. Um, these can really start to add up. If you just get one or two of these a few times, you are going to fill your graveyard up really quickly, um, which is what you want, because our next package is going to be how to recur stuff from the grave. Um, so you want a lot of stuff that you can pick specifically. Um, you want to go ahead and read the first one? Sure. So we'll start off with Victimize. It's a three mana sorcery. Choose two target cards in your graveyard, sack a creature, and if you do, return those cards to the battlefield tapped. That is doing all of the things that your deck wants to do. Right. A lot of times you're sacking tokens to get two real creatures back. Um, and it's straight to the battlefield, just everything you want. And a lot of times you can even use those ATB effects to sometimes even get more creatures back or get more sack outlets or something like that. This is really just an overall value card in your deck. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, most of the other things, if you could just have them be victimized over and over and over. Yep, <laughs> exactly. So, all right. Next up, we have one that kind of benefits... Not just you, but you can also use it politically to make deals with one of your opponents, and that is Skullwinder. Um, it's a three-drop with Death Touch Snake, and when it, e when it enters the battlefield, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Then choose an opponent, and that player returns a card from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. It's really basically Eternal Witness, but it gives your opponent some value. You get to pick which opponent, and it's easier to cast because it's just one green. Plus, it's a death touch body. Yeah. It's really just such a good card for Commander, and I don't see it nearly played as much. I think it's cheaper than Eternal Witness. Even. No, Eternal Witness... Oh, you mean price-wise? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I would assume so. Eternal Witness is in the deck. Um, but I like Skullwinder also because it's... For the same effect, I'm usually benefiting, it, benefiting from it more. I'm going to have more cards to choose from from the grave. So when I have... 30 cards in my grave, and my opponent that I'm picking has 7. Okay, they're getting the best card out of their 7. I am getting the best out of 30. I am usually coming coming out way ahead in that transaction. Yeah, definitely. And next up is another card that I do not see nearly enough. Um, Phyrexian Reclamation. It's just 1 black for an enchantment, and you pay 1 in a black and 2 life. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, super mana efficient. Yeah, that is, two life is probably worries people who are newer to the format, but you start with 40. You're yeah. not going to run out anytime soon, and that's just amazing value to pull any creature you want from your grave, put it in your hand, replay it. Yeah, your life is a resource. Um, getting exactly back what you need from your grave is just well worth it. Yeah. 
Next up is another great card in the deck because it is um, is Dread Return. Two and two black for a sorcery turn target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Not your hand, but to the battlefield. And the other important part of this is the flashback. You sack three creatures and you cast it from the grave. Like, it, there's a lot of times you'll be dredging so much and you'll hit sorceries and instants and stuff that you'll have to use Skull or the... Yeah, Skullwinder Skullwinder. or Eternal Witness to get those back because they're what you're what you need. This does it itself. You're gonna sack three creatures and get the creature back, cast it from the grave, even if you dredge it in there. Or you can cast it from your hand and get two two activations out of it, it's mm -hmm. even better. Yeah, that's a really good effect just because you almost wanna cast it from your grave more often than you want to cast it for its actual four mana cost. Because yeah. you have enough tokens that you're gonna always have some free stuff to sack. Yeah, and if you have one of those effects that you draw a card or something like that when a creature dies, then you're just getting even more value because you're drawing cards from your creatures dying also. And lastly, I think is the card that usually sets me up to win the game more than any other, and one I don't see in nearly enough decks, and that is Stitch Together. It's just two black, so two mana for a sorcery return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. But it has Threshold. Return that card from your graveyard to the battlefield instead if seven or more cards are in your graveyard. I have never cast this and not had Threshold activated. Um, in this deck, I don't think you even have to worry about hitting Threshold past like five turns into the game. So. No, I, I'm usually like, I have 30 cards in my grave and I'm like, do you guys really want me to count? I know I have seven. Um, and it's usually after I play a zombie, so I've already counted. I have like 13 creatures in the grave, so... Awesome. Great card, extremely underrated. Um, yeah, just two mana to bring something from the grave right to the field. That's in conjunction with one of the other cards I'm going to talk about later. Is probably it's just yeah. too good. And then finally, how do you use this deck to win the game? All right, so we have a few ways. Um, first way I want to talk about is the blood artist effects. Um, we have a few of them in this deck. And when we're sacking all these creatures, we're draining life from our opponents. Um, we can get to the point, if we cast Izoni, Izoni with a sack outlet, we can just drain our opponents for, for the game um, that way. So we have the Blood Artist effects. Then we have one that I'm not sure about, but I haven't gotten to play it, but I can't imagine it being bad in this deck. And that is Masaryk. Um, five drop flying 2-2, two, two, and whenever a player sacks with another permanent, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control. So if you just use a zoni to get a ton of tokens, sack a few of them, suddenly all those tokens become pretty scary threats, um, swinging in for big damage. And speaking of swinging in for big damage, the way I win more often than not is using Stitch Together to bring Craterhoof Behemoth back from the grave. Um, very typical way to win in a token strategy, but the fact that I can cheat it out for just two black mana most of the time, or some other effect to pull it from the grave, yeah, it's just busted. That is the difference between a Selesnya deck winning on turn 15 with Crater Hoof Behemoth, mm -hmm. and your deck maybe winning on turn 10 or less right. with just the sheer number of tokens and a Crater Hoof. And Selesnya is the one that's a little better known for the number of tokens it can make. Right, and the nice thing about that and being able to cheat it out in multiple ways is the fact that I can play a Zoni, get a ton of tokens, and then cast Crater Hook Behemoth in the same turn. Um, then it's just game over. There's really nothing anyone can do after that. Mm -hmm. So, with all of that said, do you have any unique cards in there that are just kind of anything special? Yeah, probably my favorite, my my pet card of the deck is um, Pattern of Rebirth. Another way to get Crater Hook Behemoth um, if it's still in the deck. And it is three and a green for an enchant creature. And when an enchanted creature is put into the graveyard from play, that creature's controller may search his or her library for a creature card and put that card into play. If the player does, they shuffle their library. So for four mana, you get an enchantment. Just enchant whatever creature you don't care about on the board. You can sack it um, or let it die in combat. Or if it's a big enough creature, you can just attack freely with it because they aren't going to want it to die in combat um, and get some free damage in that way. But as soon as it dies, search up Crater Hoof or um, 
Masaryk or some other creature you care about, something that's going to get you value. If Creator Host's in the grave, you can get Eternal Witness to get it back. Um, just a lot of benefit, a lot of things you can hit with that. Yeah, that's a really good card, and I have not seen that in too many deck lists, but I know I really loved having it in uh, the Sultai thing, Muldratha. Yeah. So. Muldratha is the reason I got it in the first place, um, and it goes great in any Gogari deck, so. Mm hmm. Very good. Okay, so that was Cody's deck tech on Izzoni. Uh Stay tuned. We'll be coming out with more and more deck techs coming uh, the next few weeks. Um, hopefully from then on, because we don't have too much getting in the way now. Uh, and then, uh, with all of that said, if you guys have any suggestions on upgrading these decks or suggestions on decks for us to do um, videos on in the future... Let us know in the comments. Send us a message. We have social media that you guys can all follow. Um, hit us up on Twitter. Um, yeah, maybe well, we'll set up other things, but just let us know. Um, and there'll be links to those down in the description below. Yep. Deck tech for this, or deck list for this coming out with yep. that. Um, don't forget to give us a subscription, like the video, click the little bell notification. Uh, to hear about any new videos we have coming up, because we should be posting a lot more soon. This is Commander Cafe, signing out. That one's so much better than we thought. <laughs>